This video was brought to you by Indently.io. Learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be exploring the keyword finally. And the reason I'm making this video is because a lot of the comments are telling me that they do not really see the difference between using a finally block and excluding the finally block. And also in 2025, there is some added information since they are releasing a new update in Python 3.14 which might affect certain code bases. So I just thought it was a good opportunity to make another video on finally, which hopefully goes into a bit more depth and gives people a better understanding on how finally should be used. So first of all, let's take a look at the power of finally. And for this example, I'm going to create a function called read file. And this function should take a path of type string and it's going to return to us none. Now the file, is going to be of type text IO. And that's something we need to import. So from typing import text IO, or actually the file is going to be of type text IO or none. So it's an optional and it's going to initially be set to none. Then inside we can try to open the file by providing a path in read mode. And what we want to do is just read what's inside the file. So we'll type in file.read. But obviously if something goes wrong, such as the file doesn't exist or it's corrupted as something, we're going to want to handle that. In this example, we're only going to handle one exception, which is the file not found error. There are other errors out there, but we're just going to handle this one for this example. And we're going to print that there was an error, file not found. Now after the accept block, we're going to include a finally block. And what finally does is execute code no matter what happens. So regardless of what you write here, finally will always be executed, which makes it great for cleanup operations. For example, if you open a file and it crashes, the finally block will be able to close that file properly. So what we're going to do inside here is print closing file. And if there is a file that is open, we can type in file.close. And to make this a bit more realistic, we're going to also accept exception as E and just log that information, print something else went wrong. I mean, this isn't really that realistic. Accepting exception as E is an incredibly lazy approach to handling errors, but for this example, it's going to suffice. So we're going to type in something else went wrong and depending on what went wrong, we can print the representation of E. But let's go down and call this function. So here we can type in read file and we can insert our file, which is going to be called secret.txt. And this is a file that I have inside my project. So when I run it, it's going to read the contents and the contents were Bob was here. And then it's going to close that file. Now imagine the file doesn't exist. We type in something such as hello.txt this file does not exist. So we're going to encounter an exception and it's going to try to close the file regardless of what happens. Whether there was an exception or no exception, it's going to try to close the file. Now, if the file wasn't found, we don't really have an issue there because we don't have to close a file that doesn't exist. But in other scenarios, if you open up a file and something goes wrong and you encounter an exception, if you don't close that file, you're going to end up with a memory leak. So with the finally block, we can ensure that we close that file no matter what happens. Now in modern Python, we don't have to write all of this. We can easily type in with open whatever the file is and insert the code inside this block. We can use the with keyword and that's a lot cleaner, but that was not the point of this example. I just wanted to show you a simple example where you would see finally being used. Moving on, I want to show you the difference between using finally and not using finally. This example hopefully should clear up any confusions you might have regarding finally. So first of all, we're going to try to raise an exception. The exception will be that the program crashed. And this is just to simulate that we're running some code, but something unexpected happened, such as let's pretend we wanted to print hello world, but something on the way there crashed our program. So this never got to print. Then we can accept exception as E and print whatever error occurred. So here we can print the representation of E. Now, finally, we can send some sort of crash report. So print sending crash report to support. I know it's a wicked rhyme. Feel free to use that anywhere. You don't have to credit me. Anyway, let's run this and see what happens. When we run it, you're going to notice that it's going to raise the exception 
print is never going to be called because we encountered an exception before we could run that. And thanks to this exception, we were able to execute the code in the accept block. And finally, we were able to send the crash report to support. Now, what I'm going to do next is change this to a type error. So here we're accepting type error as E. So if we encounter a type error, this accept block is going to catch it. And what we're going to raise instead is a value error. And now if we run this, you're going to notice that since we did not catch the value error, it's still going to crash our program. But thanks to the finally block, we were able to send a crash report regardless. Now watch what happens if we do not include a finally block when this happens, when we encounter an exception that we did not catch. So let's run this. And if we look inside here, you'll notice that we were unable to send that crash report. And that's because the program crashed before we could actually reach this print statement. But with the finally block, this will always be executed no matter what happens inside here. And that's incredibly important to understand because once again, with the finally block, the crash report will always be sent. While without it, there's a chance that it's not going to be sent. Now up next, I want to talk about something that's going to change in Python 3.14. And that's including multiple return statements in a try, accept, and finally block. For example, we might have a function and we're going to call this function connect. So it sounds a bit more realistic and it's going to return an integer based on the status. For example, we can try to connect and here we'll type in trying to connect to server. And unfortunately, while we're doing this, we're going to raise an exception or we're going to encounter an exception, which we obviously raised and it's going to say could not connect to server. So on a real project, this would happen naturally while here we're forcing it and we're going to return one as the code. Then we're going to accept exception as E. And here we're going to print the representation of E so we can see what error that was. And we're going to return zero. So zero is practically just going to say that there's no connection while one is going to say that there is a connection. And finally, we're going to log whatever happens, whether it connects or not, we're going to send a report to support. So sending report to support. And we're going to return two. And you're going to notice something immediately here. And that is that we're going to get some syntax highlighting in Python 3.14. And I'm going to be leaving a link to the documentation in the description box down below, which will take you to the pep that says that having a return statement in a finally block might raise a syntax warning or a syntax error. It's still unclear which one it's going to raise. Personally, I think it's just going to be a syntax warning such as you see here. It's not going to prevent us from running the code, but it is going to warn us. Anyway, right now, if we were to connect or attempt to connect, you'll notice that it's going to encounter an exception and send a report to support. And something more useful would be to actually see what the result was. So let's type in result of type integer is equal to connect and print the result. And what you're going to notice is that we're going to get two as a result. Even if we encountered the exception, and executed everything inside the accept block, it did not return zero. This is because the finally block always has the last word. No matter what you do in your accept block or in your try block, finally will overwrite it. And that's why you need to be careful when you're using something that exits out of a function or a for loop or a while loop in your try, accept and finally block. And just to show you how that looks in a for loop, I'm going to paste in this code snippet. So here I have a function called example. And what I'm doing here is looping through the range of 10. And for each iteration, I'm going to try to print i and to simulate some sort of exception. Once we encounter the value of three, we're going to raise this exception here that something went wrong with this iteration. And in the accept block, I printed the error and I sent a report to the devs. And to prevent further damage, I used a break inside the accept block. So hopefully we will break outside of the for loop when this happens. And finally, I don't know, maybe I was drunk and maybe something else happened and I wasn't that attentive, but finally I decided to continue. And once again, the finally block is going to end up overriding the accept block because finally always has the final word. So if we were to run this by typing in example and running it, you'll notice that even if we encounter the exception at iteration number three, that's not going to prevent the loop from continuing. 
Well, if we were to omit that and rerun the loop, it's going to break normally. So it's actually quite nice that it warns us. And once again, you should start seeing either a syntax error or a syntax warning starting in Python 3.14. Now, before we conclude this video, I want to give you one more example on how powerful finally actually is. So here we're going to try to raise an exception. No surprise there. It's actually all I do these days. And you'll type in no internet. So without internet, it's kind of hard to perform a lot of operations in the modern day. And we're going to accept exception as E. Print the representation of that exception. And then we're going to raise another exception within this exception. And here we can type in another exception occurred. And finally, we're going to print sending report to devs. Finally, we can run this and see what happens. During handling of the above exception, another exception occurred. And it's going to show us the exception that occurred. But the surprise is, if I open this up a bit, that we were able to send a report to the devs. And the order of the print statements in here might be seen as a bit random. But the only thing that's important here is that the finally block went through with what it said it would do. Because again, first we encountered an exception, we tried to fix that exception, but we failed miserably and raised another exception. And this crashed our program. But once again, the finally block always has the final word. So this is guaranteed to be executed. The only times it's not guaranteed to be executed is when something happens beyond the scope of Python, such as your computer turning off. Finally, won't be able to execute because obviously there's no power on your computer. Or there might be something even more critical, such as your computer failing. If Python can't run, if it's beyond the scope of Python, finally is not going to execute anything. But as long as it's in the scope of Python, finally is guaranteed to execute. Anyway, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know if you have any other comments or questions in the comment section down below. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.